somewhere over there is a brown Tibetan monk bag with my gear. Could someone? Yeah. Before I'd like to welcome also our dear friends Divya and Nagabar Prabhus. They served here for many, many years. Are you in Arizona or Hawaii? They're between Arizona and Hawaii. Somewhere in the ocean. Of course, we'd like to welcome them. They, they served here, did a lot of our landscaping and groundskeeping for years and years and years. And many of the flowers that were grown for Divya, so I think it's a moral of this world. Just to Krishna Prabhu um, said that there would be a little talk on the Bhagavad Gita. Okay, broadly. Anyone who knows me knows that um, I have a hard time behaving, I guess. Um, I was going to talk um, I was going to start with a couple of paragraphs from Srila Prabhupada's preface to his presentation of Srimad Bhagavatam. And I seem to have lost it. Oh, here we go. Um, my, I've been reflecting the last couple of weeks. I've just been um, off the island of Oahu for the first time since December 2019. Uh, I went back there just before the plague. And uh, I had a really wonderful, I had a great excuse not to, not to leave the islands. I'm not one of those people who had ever experienced rock fever. Um, I've gotten these men somewhere between 50 and 60 percent of my life since 1967 um, in the islands. Um, and uh, I'm very grateful um, to Jishra Krishna Prabhu and Rinda Sundari for um, inviting me here and for the other devotees, um, some of your and their own Mother Deidre is Mother Deidre off every morning. She loves me down with the plate and I'm on the side. But I, it's, so, it's so heavy, I have to share it with you every morning. Um, and uh, I've been looking forward to coming back to them for a long time because I especially remember um, this crowd. We had wonderful programs. Um, I think I got here on Friday, on Friday night. Um, we went to a really, really nice home program somewhere out in the suburbs. And, um, and then I gave a bunch of classes over the weekend uh, through Tuesday. But um, I was quite amazed by the Sunday Feast crowd. This is such a wonderfully um, diverse group of um, folks sitting at the lotus feet of Radha, Shishu Radha Govinda. Um, and so I, this is, you're a big reason um, I've been looking forward to um, coming back here. So um, I just, I mean, I flew to uh, Dallas and then Houston and then up here, and I didn't know how long I was going to stay or exactly where I was going to go next. Oh, I'm kind of figuring out the next step right now, but I'm just really happy to be here. I wanted, um, what I've been reflecting on 
since I've been associating with so many wonderful devotees over the last three weeks, is the noble purposes of the, of the Hare Krishna Society, the noble purposes of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, which um, Srila Prabhupada um, worked so hard to establish. And as I think someone was observing recently, I can't remember where I heard it. I listen to too many classes sometimes. So too many and not enough. Um, um, how uh, extraordinary, extraordinary um, changes we made in our lives, especially um, in the early days. Oh, I was listening to a, a talk by Radhik Rama, um, one of his talks uh, last couple of days, and he, he made that observation. Um, we did crazy stuff. I mean, it was just, I mean, we just, we turned our back on everything. We went and slept on the floor. I slept in the yard. I slept in the front yard when I was a brown child. And um, so this is why Srila Prabhupada did this. Why, um, as he was about to turn 70, got on a freighter um, after having cajoled the owner of the steamship line. I mean, he did a sit-down sit strike outside her office until she would meet with him. And then when she met with him, Anybody ever seen the video of uh, Sumati Maharaji recounting her uh, encounters with Srila Prabhupada in Mumbai back in 1965? It was so, it's, it's so refreshing to watch. She says, I told him, you're crazy, you old man. It's cold there. There's nothing to eat. You'll die there. Forget it. And still Srila Prabhupada persisted. To her credit, she uh, relented. And this is why Srila Prabhupada wrote, we must know the present need of human society. And what is that need? Human society is no longer bounded by geographical limits to particular countries or communities. She was writing this in 1958 or 9. That's, it's how many years is it later? How old, wait, that, that'll remind me how old I am. <laughs> human society is broader than in the Middle Ages. And in the world, tendency is toward one state or one human society. The ideals of spiritual communism, according to Srimad Bhagavatam, are based more or less on the oneness of the entire human society, yea, of the entire energy of the living beings. The need is felt by great thinkers to make this a successful ideology. Srimad Bhagavatam will fill this need in human society. It begins, therefore, with an aphorism of Vedanta philosophy, to establish, to establish the idea of a common cause. Human society at the present moment is not in the darkness of oblivion, sometimes we wonder. It has made rapid progress in the fields of material comforts, education, and economic development throughout the entire world. But there is a pinprick somewhere in the social body at large, and therefore there are large-scale quarrels. I'm 75 years old. I cannot remember a time when there weren't a few wars going on in this world. A little pinprick indeed. Huh? Um, And therefore, there are large-scale quarrels even over less important issues. There is a need of a clue as to how humanity can become one in peace, friendship, and prosperity with a common cause. Srimad Bhagavatam will fill this need, for it is a cultural presentation for the re-spiritualization of the entire human society. So, this was, this was, uh, Sri the Prabhupada <laughs> says, if I, if I won't behave, it won't either, I guess. We'll figure it out. Okay. There we go. That might be better. Um, so when he is when Sri the Prabhupada established his society, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness in That's not what it was supposed to do. Um, 
Um, he laid out several purposes, and um, <clears throat> it would have been easier for me to oh, to recall them if looks like I might have closed that. Yeah. Many uh, of those purposes. The first purpose, the first purpose, of course, a couple of purposes are to teach the science of Bhakti Yoga, um, which is that uh, process for re-spiritualizing human society. And um, um, and then, over several of those purposes, he addressed the need for uh, the society to serve as a, 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 a forum for bringing devotees of the Lord together so that we can um, mutually, um, uh, we can together grow uh, our spiritual lives. This is something to, that we should do together. Uh, we call it the Sankirtan movement. Sankirtan, it's only Sankirtan if everybody's chanting together. So should the Prabhupada establish an international society for Krishna consciousness? And um, he exhorted his disciples along the way over and over and over again to work together cooperatively to grow this society. So I think when, I, when I think about growing the society and the purpose for, for doing that, what impact that might have on the participants, the individual practitioners who are working together. Um, I, it, it brought me to the ninth chapter of Adi Lila of uh, Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. For those who aren't too familiar, um, in the ninth chapter of Adi Lila, um, a metaphorical uh, tree, desired tree of devotional service is presented. Um, and, and that tree, is all the different devotees working together to spread Krishna consciousness. And the roots of that tree were, I think it was nine very heavy duty sannyasis. So you need something, you need something heavy to anchor the tree, right? Um, we know that in Hawaii there are some trees that may not have, have very deep roots and when we have a big storm come, uh, they might fall over. And uh, we recently have a huge drought. This was during the mango season. We had a mango tree that hadn't been attended to for some several years, and there was one very large branch that um, was going over some spaces where we park the devotees' cars for when we had public programs, big public programs, so that they're out of the way and the park, little parking lot that we have um, is available for guests' cars. And our temple president, Kusha. Um, who, coincidentally, met the devotees the same night I did and moved into the temple the same day. Uh, we both moved into the, we met the devotees at a Jimi Hendrix concert at the Waikiki Shell in May of 69. Um, and that was the first time either of us chanted um, with the devotees. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, Jimi Hendrix is just okay. <laughs> People can say what they like about it but he was instrumental in my meeting the devotees. And um, a few months later, with different adventures going on in the meantime, uh, one day, each of us found, uh, found ourselves moving into the temple. This was a, I think it was a few days before Gaur Purnima in 1970. So this huge branch, it was a great big branch, it was really loaded with mangoes. And it um, wasn't it even a necessarily a storm. It was just a little, just enough wind to really kind of get it going. And the weight of the mangoes was so great that the branch fell smack on Kusha's car and crushed it. <laughs> she has a new pride now, thanks to her insurance. <laughs> so um, when I think about growing the society, I think about Lord Chaitanya. This was his quandary. Um, Lord Chaitanya, so he's talking about, he, he presents himself as a Mali, a gardener, 
But then he says, you know, I'm just one person. Zamyoni, as in all the parts of this tree are spiritually cognizant, and as thus, they, as, as they grow, they spread all over the world. I am the only gardener. How many places can I go? How many fruits can I pick and distribute? It would certainly be a very laborious task to pick the fruits and distribute them alone. Anybody here familiar with the third verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam? Uh, the third verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's the Ashirvad or blessing verse of the Bhagavatam. I can't see that. Oh dear. God, somebody unplug that clock, please. <laughs> I have a problem with time. I don't talk much. I, I keep to myself a lot, but once I get going, it's, it's a disaster. Um, where was that verse? Third verse. Think of a oh, the third verse of the, the Bhagavatam. Uh, the, so, Krishnadas Kaviraj tells us, explains in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita that an, um, a Mangalacha, an auspicious invocation to a sacred text, has three parts. One is Namaskar, offering obeisances to the deity of the text. Um, the second is Vastu Nirdesha, which states the purpose, and in the case of the Bhagavatam as well, uh, the audience, the, the um, um, probably most most receptive audience as well. Um, and these two things, we see this even in epic poetry in, in the West. I mean, we see this in, in Homer's, um, you know, Iliad and the Odyssey, you see it. In, and so, uh, we even see it in Milton's Paradise Lost, written, you know, an epic poem written in English, where he invokes as his muse, the Lord, and he explains the purpose of the poem, to justify the ways of God to man. So um, Bhagavatam has this. And then the third part is the Ashirvada or uh, blessing. This is the benediction that we get from reading Srimad Bhagavatam in this case. And that is that this Bhagavatam, it, said, it explains that the Bhagavatam is the ripened fruit of Vedic knowledge. And that those who are qualified will be able to actually taste and appreciate this fruit. And one of, the, one of our teachers, one of our previous teachers um, from about 350 years ago explains just what the Bhagavatam means by that. This is a fruit. It doesn't have any skin. It doesn't have a pit. It doesn't have fibers. It's just juice. So how do you consume it? You have to drink it. It's the only way you can take it. You can drink it. And we drink this fruit through the years. And Vishnu Chakravar, I'll, I'll paraphrase um, in a little cruder, maybe uh, uh, colloquial language. Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says that those who know how to relish this will drink and drink until they pass out. And when they come to again, they get up and drink some more. And when they pass out, they get up and they drink some more. It, it's meant to make us a little mad after Krishna. So this is the kind of fruit Lord Chaitanya is trying to distribute, the fruit of love of God. Um, he says, if I do not distribute these fruits, what shall I do with them? How many fruits can I alone eat? By the transcendental desire of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, water has been sprinkled all over the tree, and thus there are innumerable fruits of love of Godhead. Distribute this Krishna consciousness movement all over the world. Let people eat these fruits and ultimately become free from old age and death. If the fruits are distributed all over the world, my reputation as a pious man will be known everywhere. And thus, all people will glorify my name with great pleasure. And then he says, how good I have one. Oh. So then he says, one who has taken his birth as a human being uh, in the land of India, part Varsha, should make his life successful and work for the benefit of all people. Um, I want, see how slow the wife is on the iPad here. Part of Bhumi came on the point of Janma Jar. Janma Sarva Kari Par, Parawikha. So he's, uh, Lord Chaitanya is, how do I stop? 
Um, okay, I want to, I really want the next verse. Okay, that's not going to happen. So I'll just keep moving. Maybe I'll keep up with the clock. Okay, so apparently I'm not. Uh, so this is, everybody's decided not to take it today. <laughs> so, so then he says, this is a really wonderful verse, and, and I'm afraid my, because I can't get it up from my, and, and I'm a little nervous, I'm going to miss the Sanskrit. Eitava Jagmasa Palyam. Anybody know this verse? Thank you. Um, better than an iPad. <laughs> Keeps on your prosecutor close. Um, he said, it is the duty of every living being to perform welfare activities for the benefit of others with his life, wealth, intelligence, and the words. Pranay Raktai Dhyavacha. In other words, Lord Chaitanya, actually he's quoting Krishna here. Um, and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, come, I'll come back in a moment for some context. But I want to cover these four things. Pranay, Arkai, Tiyarlacha. Srila Prabhupada addressed this, he cited this verse a number of times throughout the, over the years he was with us. And he explained, Pranay, with your life, Arkai, whatever assets you have. Um, I was just listening to a talk by Radhi Ramani. He was talking about the toolbox that our karma blesses this particular body with. Whatever skills, assets we have, um, we should engage those. Pranayaraka, Dhyaya, and Vacha. Um, our intelligence. Um, so Srila Prabhupada once explained, one devotee was asked, well, there's a household, a young household devotee, the fellow who just gotten married, you know, and he was trying to figure out how he could stay in the fire of Christian consciousness, how he could stay really meaningfully engaged. So Shiva Prabhupada asked one of the leaders to explain, and he wasn't satisfied with the explanation that this leader was beginning to offer. So he cited this verse, and then he said, so pranayartartyavacha, give your life for spreading Krishna consciousness. But if you can't give your whole life working for spreading Krishna consciousness, then your wealth, Artem. He used wealth in that, in, in that instance. And then Tia, your intelligence. Use your intelligence, he said, to write about Krishna consciousness and to speak to people about Krishna consciousness. Um, oh, actually, that's not true. He said to write. And he said, if you think you don't have any intelligence, then just tell people what you understand about Krishna. We speak according to what we've heard from our previous teachers and according to our realization. That's what you know, will actually touch people's hearts, but will actually move people. So the context here is one day, well, every day when he was living, when he was a boy in Vrindavan, Sri Krishna would go out to the forest with his friends and the calves when he was little, and when he was a little bigger, with the cows. So apparently this was a and he's a little bigger, it must have been you know, when they were taking care of the cows. Because this one day, they went far enough from Vrindavan, this day they didn't pack their own lunches. They often pack their own lunches, that's a whole different, don't get them started on that, we won't get anywhere. We won't have this out of it. Um, but this day, they didn't, they didn't uh, bring their own lunches, and sometimes when they didn't bring their lunches, if they didn't go too far out, lunch would be sent out to where they were. But this time, they were closer to Mathura than Vrindavan. It's the whole thing. This is a, the uh, kind of lead up to the story of Krishna's blessing the wives of the Brahmins. It's a different class. And um, so it's in the, in the heat of the summer. And they're standing in the shade of these trees in the heat of the summer. And Vrindavan can be a hot place in the summer. Uh, those monsoon rains are really rough because it just cooled things down a little. And, um, and Krishna is standing there with his friends, and he's, um, he's looking at the trees, and he's saying, 
Just see what noble creatures they are. They're giving us shade. They give everything. They give their bark, their wood, fruits, flowers, leaves, everything that human society needs, the trees provide without measure. They just give. It's like the old Shel Silverstein um, book, The Giving Tree, which is, it's either very wonderful to read or very difficult to read. When you get to the end, and you don't, I never know how to read it. Um, I guess this is one of the things that makes it, makes it a powerful book. So, um, and, and then he says, everybody should be like this. He says, they give of themselves with, you know, without, um, you know, without any, without holding back at all. They give us everything. So, um, and then he says, everybody should be like that. So in the next verse, he says, just see how these trees are maintaining every living entity. Their birth is successful. Their behavior is just like that of great personalities. For anyone who asks anything from a tree never goes away disappointed. And then he explains that everyone should be like these trees. This is a really um, wonderful verse. And this takes me to a, a, another place which is kind of tied in, but we don't have time for it. Fortunately, I didn't queue it up. It's from a book called The Songs of Trees by um, uh, a professor at Swan University of the South. Um, beautifully, beautifully written book, and especially his introduction. There's something in it that just so wonderful. It blows my mind every time I read it. I cry every time I read it. And I think this is what our life should be. Because he makes the point that the trees don't stand alone in the forest. It's a whole system, and we know that now. Because of the work like, um, what's his name, Bolenbeer? and Samard, and, and then um, Pascal, the guy who wrote, who wrote this book. We know that trees, the trees are families. They communicate with each other. They feed each other. They warn each other when there's, when there's danger. They compete with each other. Sometimes they kill each other when, they, when things get really scarce. Uh, they'll take nutrient mother tree, and a mother tree, she'll kill herself to feed her babies when things are wrong. Um, or she'll steal from another tree to be, to be in her progeny. It's amazing. So um, Krishna is glorifying the trees and he's saying that the nobility of human beings is to be like these trees, to give themselves as much as they can for the benefit of others, for the para for the upliftment, for the benefit of everyone else. So this is why Shri Prabhupada created the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Uh, as he said, to bring the members together for different purposes, for kirtan, for hearing uh, about the glories of Krishna, um, and for sharing our hearts with, each, with, with others. And the point that he made over and over again is that we are a society, we are a family. Where a society is intended to be based on love and trust. And as we come together with these purposes in the core of our hearts, the love, the, that love and that trust will grow. And the impulse to share with others will also grow to the point where it will be difficult to resist. So, um, the, the, you know, the one point that we can see there is that each of us is, is actually uh, quite amazing. Krishna tells us in the Bhagavad Gita, right? You're amazing. You're, you're, you're Jiva. You're amazing. Some people, some see the soul as amazing, some think of him as amazing, etc. Point is, we're amazing. We're consciousness. We're in this, we're in this world of jada, dead matter, inert matter. This thing is nothing without us. If we don't charge the battery, if we don't keep these things tight, <laughs> it's just junk. It's just, it's just stuff. We're different from everything here. We're conscious. We're aware of ourselves and aware of everything else. We're capable. Um, we not, only, not only are we eternal, but we're, we're also aware and we're capable of bliss. We're capable of real love. And, especially when it comes to love, 
we're much better together. That's a society. That's a society. So it's it's always heartening when um, we're, when when we see so many folks coming together with that Srila Prabhupada says in his preface to the, the Srimad Bhagavatam with a common cause to hear about and glorify Krishna um, to take the company of, of those who also um, are trying to become Krishna conscious um, to taste um, the wonderful foodstuffs that are offered to Sri Sri Radha Govinda or Jagannath Balanir Sivakra and uh, Sri Sri Gauranya my heart and um, and, and share to the extent that we're able and the ways that we're able, uh, whatever whatever it is we have in our hearts. And we shouldn't be afraid that if we share what we have in our hearts, we're going to lose it, that it's going to become depleted. It grows. That's how we grow, by giving. So um, I think I'll stop here and see if there are any quick questions. I can't see the, oh, it's quarter after. Quick questions or comments? Yes. Quick question. Um, what branch do we come from? Uh, well, the branches. I think I need to adjust my hearing aids. I had them uh, have a special program for kirtans. I got cut down on the sound of the car because my hearing has suffered over the years. Um, well, if we were to look at the figurative tree, desire tree of. of uh, devotional service in the ninth chapter of Ali Leda, I don't think there's a necessarily a specific one of those branches that we could identify. But Srila Prabhupada writes that, we, that the International Society for Krishna Consciousness is one of those branches. And the other um, missions as well, they're also branches um, of that tree. And, um, and we're all meant to produce the same fruit. Um, everybody, and, and each of us, so it, it would be really cool if they were all working cooperatively too. Maybe someday, maybe our kids, kids. And we have we have fourth generation devotees now in, in, in Hawaii. We have a, uh, one four and a half year old boy whose whose father and whose father, whose father is the grandson um, of uh, a friend of mine, um, Logan. and uh, he grew up. Mostly at the home of the temple, actually. And, and Maruti is quite, his son is quite an amazing person. So perhaps they will find a way um, to, to um, it, while we maintain um, the boundaries, we don't uh, um, uh, ne neglect the boundaries of the little lines between um, the different missions, because there are differences, a little differences of boo, differences, differences of approach, depending on the different little branches that um, we came from. But we all, the main point is that we all come from the same tree and we should be producing the same fruit, same kind of fruit. Or maybe there are grafts. Maybe there are Hayden mangoes here, Golden Glow mangoes there, Peary mangoes here, Julia, which was one that I gave to tell me about them. Julie mangoes um, in Trinidad. He says, oh, we've got to have a um, So maybe there, but they're all going to be mangoes and they're all going to be amazingly sweet. No common name or something in the country. You know, a little bike country or something. But uh, you know, we, you know, we want a bunch of things. So I, I don't really know. I don't have a, a clear answer to that. But the, I think the main point is that all the branches come from that same trunk that are rooted by those nine heavy duty sannyasis, Kesha Bharati, and Dhamananda Bharati. Is that okay? Yes, you know, as a matter of fact, I was just reading that two nights ago and I totally forgot that that's what Srila Prabhupada said. The hope, you know, that ISKCON is one of those branches and he does hope that we will be accepted by everyone else as one of the branches. Yeah. Uh, the, I mean, Srila Prabhupada himself set an example for that kind of cooperation. As part of his will, he established the Bhaktivedanta Charity Trust. Um, in Bengal, West Bengal, to support, to help um, maintain um, the temples uh, founded by many of his god brothers. So, yeah, you know, Prabhupada wrote me personally, we are all one family. 
there shouldn't be any us and them. At the same time, he also told me, uh, around that same time, I had a, uh, my wife, a friend of mine, and I had a private meeting with him for almost two hours. And one of the points he made there is that devotees and devotional service cannot be stereotyped. I thought of that the other day, a couple weeks ago, when I was in Dallas, and I walked past one of the devotees' house, and I saw a Corvette in the driveway. <laughs> and I just thought, oh, Sri Prabhupada did tell us devotees and devotional service can't be stereotyped. When I asked him about it, he said, yeah, it's a public horse thing, I'll get it up. <laughs> Anything else, quickly? Someone had a question there. Hey, right there. Yes, sir. <coughs> Which, sir? Oh, how did you find out you got a soul? Would you tell us your experience? How did I find out? Oh, boy, that's a huge question. <laughs> it's not so much that we have a soul. We are that soul. Soul is not necessarily the best word to use because it, it can have other meanings um, depending on the, the perspective. You know, I mean, I think that the Greeks' idea of a soul might, and the Christians' idea of a soul might be a little bit different from what we uh, conceive of what the uh, Jiva Goswami explains as the Jiva in, in I guess that's a son, Paramatma Sandarva. Um, we are the consciousness that animates this body. I am a so I am the soul, and I have a body. Now, how did I find out? I think I think I must have heard it in some previous lifetimes because I thought about it a lot when I was a kid, and things started to make sense when I started reading uh, Bhagavad Gita as it is in Srimad Bhagavatam. So I really kind of discovered that I am the soul only in the association of devotees through the instruction of my spiritual master. And, sir? You know, like, uh, trees provide life for all living beings. What more do you need than a vegetarian tree? And I've spent a lot, a lot of the last year living under one. <laughs> we, if you come to Honolulu, you will discover in the backyard we have quite an amazing banyan tree. And when guests come, uh, and we've been getting a lot of Indo, in, well, Indian and Indo-American guests since things have been opening up over the last few months. And whenever they come, I say, two things you have to do. You have to go upstairs and spend a few minutes in Srila Prabhupada's room, because he spent, maybe over the last couple of years of his life, I think he spent as much as five or six months up there translating his books. And then you have to go around into the back and take darshan of our banyan tree. We're a little crowded. Well, the thing is, speaking of banyan trees, in the summer of 1974, we were looking for a nice place to establish a temple. And um, uh, our friend Alfred Ford, who had become our brother, uh, Marish Das, said that he would, he would buy it for Srila Prabhupada. So they were sending Srila Prabhupada pictures of the different places, and when he saw a picture of that banyan tree, at that place we have now in New Guam, we've been there for 48 years, something like that. Close, yeah, 47, 48 years. Um, he said, um, get that place. He saw the pictures of that banyan tree, and it's much more expansive now than it was 40 odd years ago. He said, get that place. And I'm the reach there from where we are. So if you come to Honolulu, look for me, and I will make sure if you see Shiva Prabhupada's room, and uh, that you um, take our, I'll take pictures of you with the banyan tree. <laughs> I've, I've, been, I've done that a lot, especially while I was, I don't live there, I, I don't stay there right now when I get back. Um, I've been moved to back to my original little hut, but for a while I was staying back there, it was really easy for me because I was walking back and forth, and I, you know, I would see guests back there taking selfies, trying to take selfies on the, on the banyan tree, and I said, may I help? I said, you want close up, you want, Panoramic, and he said, Whoa. Uh, landscape, portrait, both. Okay, whatever it is you want, you got it. Thank you all so much for your indulgence.